Welcome everyone. I'll give it just a couple moments so everybody can click into the Zoom. Uh, but if you are here to learn a little bit more about Maine Maritime Academy's Regiment of Midshipmen, you are in the right spot. My name is Elizabeth Allaby. I'm one of the admissions counselors at MMA. Um, and I'm joined by this amazing panel of both current students as well as um, one of the staff members, Lieutenant Commander of the Regiment, Walt Peary. So we'll give it just another moment or so to have everybody kind of click in. I know with Zoom, there's kind of that mad rush of, do I have the right link? So no worries. And then we'll kick it off in just a moment. One thing I wanted to let everybody know, um, maybe you haven't been in a Zoom webinar such as this. So you can see all of us, the panelists, um, and we cannot see you. You don't really have a microphone to access. However, that doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you, not at all. Um, please feel free to use that chat function down below, that Q&A function. You can be typing away questions even while we're speaking. Um, that way we get to answer exactly what it is you've come here tonight to learn. So don't be shy, type into that chat, type into that Q&A. Just because we can't see you doesn't mean we don't want to hear from you, not at all. So we'll go ahead uh, and we'll officially get started. So once again, my name is Elizabeth Allaby. You're here as part of this regimental um, student panel, and we will tell you hopefully all that you've ever wanted to know, but I'll pass it over uh, to Kate. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, we are so glad to have you. And please, again, um, as Elizabeth mentioned, utilize that question and answer session um, or section and that chat function because our panelists are here for you to make sure you get your question questions answered. But before we dive into um, some of the questions that you have pre-submitted or the ones that you're gonna be um, sending to us as we go along, we wanted to introduce um, the most important feature of the tonight's program, those are the panelists. And so what I'm gonna do is have the panelists introduce themselves with who they are, um, where they're from, what they're studying. And if you guys could also answer why you're here, why you chose Maine Maritime Academy, um, that would be really helpful. So I'm gonna pass it on to Lieutenant Commander Gualteri to start the session off. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Lieutenant Commander Kelly Gualteri. I am actually the Deputy Commandant um, for Leadership Development and SIP Coordination. Um, SIP stands for a Student Incentive Program and it is one of our um, programs where you can actually become a, a Navy reservist. Um, tonight, we're gonna talk about a lot of different opportunities, both in the regiment and for those looking for some of the commissioning opportunities, which our students um, also can participate in. Um, I've been at the Academy for five years, newly in this role. Um, I am also one of the company officers um, and I am back in the classroom teaching our second class, our junior students. Um, and I will pass it on to Mr. Watt. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is John Watt. I'm a senior here at Maine Maritime. I'm from Greenville, Maine. Uh, study marine engineering technology, one of the you know, licensed track marine engineering programs that we offer. Uh, why did I choose Maine Maritime? Well, to give you the shortest answer that without boring you to death is probably going back to uh, when I wanted to go to school, I knew I wanted to go in the state of Maine. Um, and I had, you know, I wanted to go into engineering and I had, I had two basic choices. It was uh, this, or there was one other institution I'd looked at. And what it came down to for me was I knew quite a few and still know quite a few uh, people that have graduated from here going all the way back to the early 1970s up until, you know, Izzy Greeson is 2016. Uh, and they've all done very well for themselves. And mo a lot of them, all engineers, a couple of deck students, uh, but for the most part engineers, some of who got their licenses and never went to see a day in their life. They went and worked in shoreside power plants. Some of them didn't even go into engineering. They went into business for themselves and did other things. And so the flexibility that they got from their education, I was impressed with. Um, I was impressed with the, the, I came down and toured the school uh, when I was a sophomore. And then again, when I was going into my senior year of high school, uh, I've always liked the structured lifestyle. I like the discipline. I like putting on the uniform every day. I'm, you know, it's, I get a good sense of pride from that. I like being a part of something that's bigger than just myself and 
you know, the reputation of the school is, a, is very nationally renowned. And it, it, I feel pride in knowing that I can uh, be a part of that and get the opportunity to leave my mark here and take it with me. So all of those things together kind of brought me here and, and I've loved every minute of it. You know, it's been a, it's been an amazing experience so far and I've got one more training cruise to do and then uh, one more semester and sit for my exams. So uh, that's, that's why I'm here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Mr. Barton. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Nathaniel Barton. I'm a Marine engineering operations major also in my senior year. Um, so I'm also on a licensed track. I'm similar. My major is very similar to the marine engineering technology. Um, however, you don't sit for uh, one of the accreditations. Um, your, uh, your engineering accreditation, um, you have the opportunity to do that. There's a little bit more classes that go with MET, but we can talk about that a little later. Um, I'm also enrolled in the NRTC program as a marine option. So when I graduate from the, or from MMA in the spring of 2022, uh, I'll graduate and then receive my degree, my Coast Guard license, and then about an hour later, I'll commission into the United States Marine Corps as a second lieutenant. Um, from there, I plan on going to Quantico, Virginia for six months to complete TBS. Um, and from there, I'll be going on to hopefully Pensacola uh, and go on to uh, fly airplane or fly aircraft for the Marine Corps. Um, the reason why I chose the main maritime um, I'm actually from quite a far ways away. Um, I'm originally from Kailua, Hawaii. Um, and I came all the way to the East Coast. A lot of people ask me that question why I came all the way to Maine. Um, and for those of you who are out of state and looking into this, Maine's a great place if you've never been before. Um, it's incredibly unique. It's an incredibly beautiful place to be. Um, and I sort of looked at it like an opportunity as you're probably never going to have another chance to live in Maine or even in New England. So you might as well take it and kind of branch off and go to do something that you never thought you would. Um, and I'm really glad I did take this opportunity because I've learned a lot, not only in my school, but just a completely different culture than I'm used to growing up around. Um, and I've been made some of the you know, best friends of my life so far um, at this school. So I'm definitely really glad that I made the decision. Um, and with that, I'll, uh, I'll turn it off to our last student panelist, uh, Ms. Natalie Samuels. Hi, my name is Natalie Samuels. I am currently a junior at Maine Maritime and I study marine transportation operations, which means I study the deck side of things and I will be able to sit for my Coast Guard third mate's unlimited tonnage license once I graduate in the spring of 2023. Um, I'm originally from California, but I live in Camden now and I chose Maine Maritime actually to coincidentally answer the question in the chat because from my freshman year of high school, I knew I wanted to go to a structured environment. I never necessarily knew about the shipping industry, the maritime industry. My family has never been necessarily involved in it, but I knew I wanted a, a very structured lifestyle. And I knew I would get that and more at a maritime academy. And furthermore, I knew that I wanted to work nothing but a desk job or no, nowhere near a desk job in my whole life. And this is exactly the school for that. Um, so when I was in my senior year of high school, I traveled to Massachusetts Maritime, New York Maritime, and Maine Maritime. And the reason I chose Maine Maritime is because compared to every other academy, everybody was so proud of this school. The second I walked on campus, I felt at home. I felt like everybody was incredibly proud to be here of the school's reputation. And I wanted to just be a part of it. I was so excited to be able to have the opportunity to be a part of the regiment here. That's, you guys have hit a lot of nails on the head already, which is amazing. <laughs> um, and I'm glad, um, Natalie, that you had noticed that that question in the chat. I was going to kind of pull that up as kind of one of the first questions, but I'm going to actually combine that with another question in terms of um, what stands Maine Maritime Academy apart from some of the other academies, maritime academies, but also maybe potentially military academies, although we're not officially a military academy, we do have this regimental program. Um, but also, I wanted to kind of add in a layer to that question of what do you enjoy about being in the regiment? And I, got, I know you guys kind of pulled in a little bit in your introductions, but 
what's your favorite part of being in this regimental program? Um, you're all at, you've transitioned from your freshman year to your sophomore, senior, uh, junior and, and senior years. And so you've seen that full transition. And so what is it that, that you have to add about your favorite parts of being in the regiment and um, what kind of stands our regimental program apart from the other academies? But what I'm gonna do is start with, um, Lieutenant Commander Kelly Gualteri to talk about, I know, <laughs> not as the student, but to talk about some of the leadership opportunities um, from the regimental side, um, the, the commandment side, to then the students to talk about their portion. Yes, so I can definitely um, talk about the leadership opportunities. Um, Midshipman Watt is actually our regimental commander. Um, and it was just announced that um, Ms. Samuels will be our regimental commander following um, Midshipman Watt. Um, Midshipman Barton has some uh, company positions as well as some positions within the NROTC um, as well. So he's balancing both the regimental program as well as leadership opportunities in our NROTC and Marine Corps option kind of program. Um, <clears throat> There are a lot of different leadership opportunities for students, um, and it's definitely good both on a resume, but also to build that leadership, um, that leadership development piece. And that is one of the reasons our students do so well out in the industry. They get firsthand experience um, starting with small, small type group leadership um, when they're an underclassman opportunities to lead as strikers in terms of training the freshmen. Um, they get opportunities on their cruises um, to, to basically, um, you know, again, small boat crew sizes all the way up to um, ship rate positions um, that run the, the regimental side of it um, on cruises. Um, and it, it just prepares them for what life's gonna be like um, outside of MMA once they graduate. Many of our students actually leave graduation and, and head to their first job opportunity um, or their first, um, you know, the basic school and, and things, of, things like that if they're trying to go active duty in, in some capacity in, in one of the different branches of service. Um, but no one can talk more about the leadership opportunities than our students. Um, so I am gonna turn it over to them. Does do any of you want to go first, or um, should I pop one of you onto the stage here? <laughs> Natalie, I'm going to go in reverse order. So why don't you start out? Um, what kind of stands us apart, and what is your favorite part of the regiment? Um, well, like I kind of said, what stood us apart immediately upon my first tour was just the reputation the school has, and how proud every student in faculty is to be involved in it. It has such a rich history and has such a great um, tradition, honestly, is the biggest thing that stood apart for me. When it comes to um, leadership opportunities, that is an, also a big part of what stands apart is the school. Um, since I was a freshman, I've really driven myself to be leadership focused, both in the regiment and elsewhere. Um, my sophomore year when I was a third class midshipman, I was a part of training staff. So I was one of the underclass training staff strikers. Um, and at the end of my sophomore year, I became one of the sailing team captains on the varsity sailing team. And right after becoming a sailing team captain, I also was awarded uh, Charlie Company adjutant, which means I make the watch bills and do paperwork on behalf of Charlie Company. So those have been my biggest, um, leadership opportunities so far, along with also currently being a second class striker, so upper class training staff for the incoming freshmen. Um, and honestly, those have given me far more leadership opportunity than anything I could have imagined. Um, I've really enjoyed having the opportunity to better myself both in public speaking and leadership and people management and all kinds of other aspects of life. And as, um, as it was just said, I recently was awarded the, the, title of regimental commander following Mr. Watts graduation. So next year, that will be me. I will be um, the regimental commander, which means I am the top ranking midshipman in the regiment. And that means I work with the commandant staff and I work with other students to run the regiment per se. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to the current regimental commander, John Watt, to talk about the same thing. Well, you're doing all that well balancing being on the varsity sailing team, which is very impressive. That's amazing. 
Mr. Watt, go for it. Yeah. Um, so I can't necessarily, I've never been toured any of the other academies. Uh, I've sat on a couple of conference calls with some of the other student leadership at the other academies. And so I, I have met uh, people from there. So I don't know exactly, their programs are similar to ours. I know they're not the same. I, I, met, a, I met a guy when I was cadet shipping that's from actually from Cal. He was a deck student on the ship I was on. And so they're, they don't call, their system was different, but there's a lot of similarities. Um, one of the things that, you know, that, like I said earlier, I, I liked the, the lifestyle, the structured lifestyle. I've, I've always I liked that growing up. And, you know, I, I had, I always thought I had a structured, I don't enjoy being in a chaotic environment. I enjoy having, you know, uh, structure. So being here when I got here and I, you know, had to wear, you, everybody wore the same thing for the most part. And you, you wore the same thing. You ate at the same times. You went to the, a lot of the same classes. I, and I, other, the other piece of it was I liked the, I come from a small town, come from a small school. And so I, I liked the idea of coming here where, you know, roughly a thousand students. So it's, it's just a, it's a big, it's, it's bigger than where I'm from, but really it's still tiny compared to most other colleges. Um, you know, I can walk around on any given day and just about name off everybody I see for the most part, uh, which I like that. Um, and you know, the opportunities have been, are, are there. And someone told me when I got here, you know, they said, you will get out of this when this meaning the regiment and school as a whole, you will get out of it, whatever you put into it. So what they meant by that was any, what effort you put in, you know, if you choose to, the, the more you choose to get involved, the more you put yourself out there, the more you're going to get back from the, uh, program, you know, and, and I, and I can't say stress how that true that is, you know, it's easy. It's one thing to sit there and hear somebody say it, but when you actually start doing it, it's, it's really, it pays its dividends. I mean, I jumped in after, you know, my fourth class year, I took on some small uh, roles, you know, shadowing upperclassmen, doing things for them and then on crews and then sophomore year, I was a third class striker. And then I was the officer in charge for the uh, now sophomore class when I was a junior. And then when the opportunity came along to take the red, to apply for the regimental commander role, I did, and I was fortunate enough to get it. And the skills that I've gained from doing all of that are things that aren't, they're way bigger than just what's going on right here in, uh, I see a question in the chat that says, what is a striker? And I'll, I'll answer that now. Um, a striker is a training staff member. So each, each year we have the incoming class comes in and they're, uh, midshipmen under guidance or mugs is what we would call them. Uh, and it, in order to train them and get them ready to a start school and then join the regiment, we have a training staff that's selected by the upperclassmen uh, that then choose their second class strikers and second class would be like juniors where our, our juniors and third class are sophomores. So they're, you know, students that are going into their sophomore year, they're selected, they apply, they're, they're selected to be training staff to help train those students and get them ready to join the regiment. Um, so I hope that answers that. If you hear me say striker, that's what that is. Uh, so the skills I've gained have done me, have done me tremendous favors. I mean, it's helped me grow as a person. It's helped me grow as a, uh, you know, as a, not just as a leader, but as a person, as somebody, a more well-rounded person. You know, I've had to work and I've been put in situations that I've never thought I would be find myself in. And I've had to learn how to work and deal with that. And those are skills that will benefit you in the long run and benefits that will benefit me in the long run. So I, you know, I can't stress that enough. Uh, the other piece that I like a lot about the regiment that I haven't talked about is the camaraderie that you get uh, that I don't think you find at a lot of other colleges that don't have that. And even even in my conversations with some of my non-regimented peers here at the school, uh, you know, when we get here, when we show up on our first day of regimental preparatory training, we're all, we all put on the same, you know, PT gear and we're thrown into the same environment. We're not, we don't know anybody and you're, it's, you're, it's just, you spend your whole, all your time is spent like that. You all look the same, you dress the same. And so you're forced to work, you're forced into, to interact with each other and it and inevitably as you do that you start to make friends and friend groups start to trickle out and next thing you know you know you, you're hanging out with all these people that you never you know two weeks ago you had no idea who they were and now you know them all by name and you start to really get to know people that way and and 
you don't, when you don't have that, like it, even if I've, even if you're here and I've had students talk to me about it that aren't in the regiment say that they look on and see us and the camaraderie that we have, and they don't have, they don't necessarily get that because they don't have anyone pushing them together and forcing them to go to muster or go to meals at the same time or have activities that they're required to do. They don't get that level of camaraderie and they're jealous that we get it and they don't, and they have to find it through other ways, you know, getting involved in sports and things like that, which they can do. Uh, but I, that for me, just being that camaraderie that I've gotten to build with a lot of people, you know, has just been the relationships and friendships I've been able to build will go way beyond here. And I can take them with me well after I'm, I've gone out of, I've left the institution. Uh, so I know that was a long answer. I'm going to, shut up now and I'll turn it over to Barton so he can share what he has to say. All right. Thanks, John. Um, yeah. So again, I won't uh, keep beating a dead horse with this stuff, but like when it comes to this school, like it's a, such a small campus and especially like within your class, you're going to become very close with the people. Um, and when you go on cruise, that's really where it starts to come together. Like you've gotten to know people to that point you've spent enough time with them to kind of figure people out and then you go on cruise and you spend 70 straight 72 days with uh, this group of people like the bonds you build and the experiences you have like going into port um and just the day-to-day -day lives on cruise like our day-to-day -day life that you live on cruise um you create this sort of bond and these friendships that are really just like they're unbreakable in many ways um another like what we've talked about um or the my previous uh, panelists have talked about is the the leadership opportunities, and I can't emphasize more about what Mr. Watts said about it. It is what you get out. You get out what you put in, um, and there's levels of leadership throughout the regiment, um, whether it be at the company level um, or all the way up to the higher regimental or the wedge level, which is overseeing the entire regiment itself. Um, there's a place, there's a place to lead, um, at, at any point in time. And that's a skill that is really hard to do is, is leading your peers, like leading people who are like, you know, that are below you, like people that are younger than you, but trying to lead somebody who is equal to you, or maybe even older than you is a very difficult skill, but it's very necessary. Um, and the, all these sort of tasks that we do, are designed to make us better mariners when we go out. Um, because when you do go out in the industry, um, you're gonna have to lead people um, and you're gonna have to tell people what to do um, who might be a lot older than you, maybe even have more experience than you, but you still may outrank them being that you're a licensed officer. Um, so again, this school is very good. At, it knows what it's doing when it comes to like building people into types of people who are not afraid to take charge um, and do what needs to be done in order to accomplish the task and mission at hand. Thank you for that, all of you. I learned a lot too. I'm <laughs> still uh, fine tuning exactly what I know about uh, the different student leadership opportunities. Um, but one question I wanted to ask you um, that was pre submitted by one of our registrants. And I'm seeing a lot of questions come through on the chat and the QA. Please continue to ask them there. We can also, sort of on the side, be answering those too. Um, so, uh, we'll get to them as quickly as we can. But one question I wanted to ask is, um, what's a day in the life like as a regimental student? And sort of with that, um, how is it then balancing being in the regiment and being a successful student? And to set it up a notch for all, mention this for um, Natalie, but if Nate and John, if either of you are varsity athletes, and I don't know that, then you can add that piece too. What's it like being a successful student in the regiment and an athlete, things like that. So what's a day in the life like? I'm gonna start with John, because you were in the middle last, <laughs> if you don't mind. Of course. Uh, so I, I don't have any athletic role here on campus. Uh, I never have. Um, I pretty much, the only two things I've really devoted myself, my time to is, uh, my schoolwork and the regiment. That's been the two big things I've invested myself in. Um, and it's definitely been, it was, a, it was a transition when I, you know, at first uh, I found myself the first, 
my my midshipman under guidance period as a freshman was it was about a month and a half then was was pretty intense uh just was you know inspections morning and evening you know ironing my uniforms every day kind of stuff and then that kind of when when I became a fourth class and got into the regiment it kind of eased off a little bit and became it got a little bit more of a routine uh but you know, a typical, a typical day for me right now is, you know, I, I get up and I have, we have muster every day, uh, zero seven ten. Uh, we're, we're outside when the weather's nice, we do it outside. Now we're, since we're coming into the fall and winter season here, we're moving, we've moved inside, but we go to muster, um, in the morning zero seven ten every day. We have inspections once a week, usually. Uh, so we'll do personnel inspection one week, which is just your uniform and general appearance. And then the next week will be room and personnel. So for all the students that are regimented that live in the dorms, we go and inspect their rooms to make sure that they're up to standard. Uh, any students who live off campus, go and have just a regular personnel inspection. Um, so you go to muster and then pretty much after that, there, there's, you have your class, your regular classes during the day, you know, just like anywhere else, you go to class and your whatever your course schedule is, um, basically 08 to 1600 is roughly when most classes run. There are, you can get night classes. I've had them before um, that might meet once a week or twice a week. Uh, and those are usually a couple hours long or sometimes labs, especially with the, these, this condensed semesters we've had the last couple, just with the, the way things get changed because of uh, the pandemic. You know, we've had makeup labs and things on evenings that sometimes you have to do. Uh, one thing that we do have um, that's another added duty is uh, this, we stand watch on the training ship. So if you're in the limited, if you're in the unlimited license track, you have to have watch hours accumulated that is set by the Coast Guard that you need to graduate. So to get those hours, we stand watch on the training ship. Uh, so uh, that is all run by there's it's all run by the students and there's a you have upper class leadership that's in charge of a watch team they divide it into four hour watch periods from 1600 to 070730 the next day and then there's a one student on there it's current at the quarter deck is manned 24 7 so there's always even during the class day there's someone there that is standing that four hour watch the ship's crew is on board during the day and then the students take it at night uh, so you might have, you know, you might have watched tomorrow from uh, mid zero midnight to zero four hundred in the morning, and it's and then you have the o four to 08 and so on. That's an extra thing that we have to do. Uh, we're all required to do it. Everybody has to get the time, um, has to get the you know the minimum the minimum hours. You need two hundred by the time you graduate. I think for the most part, most students graduate with more than that. I think I'm up to almost three hundred now. Uh, just because of the number of students in the program and things like that. Uh, so that's, that's pretty much, I would say, a typical day. Um, we have activities and things we do, you know, our homecoming week. There's usually we have activities and stuff we get together and do as a regiment. Uh, we have this uh, commandant's time, which is on it's Mondays from 16 to 1700. And that time is just set aside and designated for uh, just regimental activities. So it might be a, we might get together and do a, you know, a, a term volleyball term or a dodgeball tournament. We might have a meeting, a briefing we have to go to and different classes might have a, you know, briefing for one thing and another class has a briefing for another. Um, but I think, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Nate, uh, Nate and Natalie. They can jump in and add their piece what what they think I missed anything and I know Natalie's got they both have different perspectives with their respective ROTC and uh varsity sport schedules so they can add more to that yeah I think I can take on the in addition to everything uh John Watt just said I can add into what it's been like being an athlete all semesters I've been at school um I still participate in the same things uh when I lived in the dorms I had the inspections um, I had, when I was a mug, I had my morning and evening musters. I had all I the same things. I have a quick question for you, Natalie. Can you explain yeah. the inspections? Why? Yeah, also, so, why muster? Yeah, of course. So um, the point of a muster is exactly as accountability is being held on a ship when you're at sea. You need to know where everybody is. You need to know where everybody is at all times. If they're on watch, you're aware of where they are, when they need to be back, stuff like that. So a muster every morning really instills that 
um, that routine into the regimen. It gives us that accountability, gives us the routine. And again, it just, like we said, it's a very structured environment. And that is one of the biggest things of it is every single morning at 710, you get to muster, they take your attendance, they give morning announcements, and then you go about your day as, as previously we talked about. And inspections, again, when you are on a ship, if you have your stuff lying around everywhere, that could easily be a hazard. So the point of an inspection is to a make sure that you're you know keeping your room clean and making sure you're not you know trashing the dorms or anything like that. But it really carries over into the lifestyle that we're choosing to go into, where we need to make sure that we're organized, we have all our things together, we know where things are, so that we're living on a ship, things are safe and put away, and we also need to get used to living in a very small environment. Uh, so it adds into that as well. And the biggest thing, again, is, like I said, accountability, structure, all these things that the regiment have, they all are for a purpose, which is to prepare us for a life at sea. And inspection is just another part of that. Um, so as I was going to say about varsity sports, um, I've been in, obviously, I've been in the regiment for, uh, this is my third, third year now. I'm almost through my first semester as a junior. And I participate in all the normal regimental things along with being on a varsity sports team. I'm currently the captain of the sailing team. And the biggest difference between a normal regimental student's day-to-day -day and a varsity student is mostly during your mug month. Uh, you have evening inspections and evening musters. And those fall into the same time as the majority of sports practices. So all you need to do is just you know, talk to your training staff, talk to your officer in charge, um, make sure you are accounted for, that they know what you're doing, why you aren't going to be there, and um, there's going to be no conflict unless you forget to, you know, let people know where you are. The whole thing about being in the regiment is, like I said, accountability, and it's just a matter of learning to balance it with sports. And um, another thing about sports is when once you get past your mug month, you don't really have much regimental activities that you need to do in the afternoon, except for somebody briefly mentioned commandant's time, which is uh, every every Monday, uh, you have hour to two hours uh, if the commandant decides to use it for whatever purpose. Usually it's a, a meeting or something along those lines, but um, sports and regiment are incredibly doable together as long as you just, you know, use your time wisely. I feel like that's very good life advice. Thank you, Natalie. <laughs> I'll pass it over to Nate if you have anything additional to add, especially because, as um, was mentioned, Nate is both in the regiment and in our uh, NROTC unit on campus, which, just to be clear, they are two separate uniformed bodies with very different purposes. And I'll let Nate kind of fill that in. Thank you. Um, so, day to day life for me in the NROTC unit. Um, I wake up 0, 4, 30, three days a week, so I can go to PT. Uh, most people do not go to PT three days a week. I go that to PT three days a week because I'm a CFL, which is a command fitness leader. Um, there's two of those for, for the unit, and we do uh, we plan the workouts for the unit, um, and we have it broken up into uh, different ability groups. So your Monday PT sessions are going to be the entire unit, but then uh, the way that the Navy breaks down, the, there's the PRT, which is the physical readiness test. Uh, the Marines have a similar test, it's a little bit different. It's called the PFT, which is the physical fitness test. Um, you take those at the beginning of the semester and at the end of the semester. The one we do at the beginning of the semester doesn't count for anything, uh, but what it does count, like officially, but it does count for the score that you get is going to determine how many days a week you have to go to PT. Um, and depending on the certain range that you fall in based off the scores, um, that you receive, you either have to go one day a week, two days a week, or three days a week, depending on how well you do. Um, and then on Tuesdays are uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays are when NRTC classes are held at Maine Maritime. Uh, those range usually uh, about three. They're all three credit courses, um, and they range from anywhere from like a, an hour to an hour and a half long classes. Uh, my freshman year it was broken up into three. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday classes are all 50 minutes, um, but it, nothing crazy that goes on or really too crazy about those classes. They, the early ones that you take your freshman, sophomore year, whether or not your Marine option or Navy, you all take the same things um, because the Navy and Marine Corps, they do work 
similarly. And then once you go off into your junior year, you're going to branch off, uh, depending on if you're Navy or Marine Corps, you're going to actually start taking specifically focused classes to whatever branch you're going to. Um, like, for example, the Navy options are going to be taking uh, uh, TNAV, which is terrestrial navigation, all their navigation courses so they can become basically trained surface warfare officers. Um, and I'm going to be and right now I'm taking uh, fundamentals of maneuver warfare. Um, so the things that the Marine Corps would be doing um, in the event of like, a, you know, just basically whatever we're doing, going to war, doing, you know, the, all the Lord's work and stuff like that. Um, anyway, um, and then the last thing is that we have lab, which is on Tuesdays uh, at 1400 or it depends a little bit, sometimes 1400, sometimes 1500, depending on the semester. Um, and that's just the general, we call them uh, GMTs. This is general military training that we go through. Uh, it's what everybody has to get. You get uh, sapper training. Um, you get all sorts of training uh, based off of that the, the Navy de determines uh, the midshipmen need to receive. Um, there's also specific classes that midshipmen will be assigned. That's to not only increase their own knowledge and the unit's knowledge, but it gets people more comfortable um, while speaking in front of a large group. Um, so that's this basic synopsis of uh, NRTC. Every once in a while we have weekend events. Um, we'll either go to like uh, New Jersey for what's known as Ranger Challenge. Um, it's an all weekend event. Um, and we go and we go into the woods and pretend to shoot rifles at each other and stuff like that. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then, yeah, we have some other smaller events throughout the year, but um, that's basically it when it comes to uh, comes to the NRTC program here. Um, I'm glad, Nate, that you brought up that NROTC program. We had a couple of pre-submitted pre questions um, about the difference between the regiment and the NROTC, and are they the same program? Can you do both? Um, what is the difference between the two? And I think you um, covered that very very well in terms of the fact that you can do both. You're part of the regimental program and you're also doing this additional piece to your education, which is that NROTC or the Marine Corps portion um, to your education. So to, to clarify, they're not the same thing. Um, students, um, for example, Natalie and John can be here purely just for the regiment to prepare them for life out at sea to gain that license that would allow them to work on any size vessel anywhere around the world, which is an amazingly large license. Um, but they don't have any military commitment upon graduation. So everything that the regiment does is to prepare them for life out at sea. But for students that want to serve the country, um, whether it's through the Navy, the Marine Corps, and then I'm going to get to our, our next program in a second, um, have that option available to them, which is really amazing. And so with that, I'm going to actually ask um, Lieutenant Commander Gualteri to talk about the very unique aspect that we are able to offer on our campus for our regimental students gaining that unlimited license who want to serve the country, but may or may not want to do so at that NROTC or the Marine Corps or the Coast Guard or the Army um, or the National Guard level. Um, yes, and I will um, just answer one question that came in. Um, yes, you can do ROTC, the regiment, as well as athletics. Um, you don't have to pick. We are Division Three. Um, so our coaches understand that first and foremost, you're here for an education, which I think is very important um, to kind of, um, you know, throw out there. Um, there are times just a traditional student um, who's also an athlete, you know, needs to study for a test and not go to practice, right? So um, our coaches are very well in tuned with the student body. They are very successful. Um, this Saturday, actually, our women's volleyball team and women's soccer team will be playing for um, the conference championship, which will give them a berth to the NCAA. Um, and there are students that both, you know, are on the in the regiment um, and previously some that actually went NROTC um, and accepted commissions and are doing quite well. Um, we also have opportunities like um, the Strategic Sea Lift Midshipman Program, which is an opportunity for students in the unlimited license program. So um, all of the three students here um, could have chosen a path where they're in the regiment, they're gonna get their Coast Guard license, but they're gonna accept a Navy Reserve uh, 
Navy Reserve Commission upon graduation. Um, the student incentive program is, is actually a payment. Um, so it's not the same as an NROTC scholarship. It is a slightly less, um, but you do get an incentive payment for choosing to go that route. Um, in essence, what it does is it ensures that we will have licensed mariners in time of need um, to staff um, maritime ships, um, you know, so basically those that are going to go out sail as deck officers or engineers um, after graduation. Um, so there is an obligation for them to work on their license for three years following graduation, um, as well as be in the Navy Reserve component um, for at least eight years and maintain their license for five um, so, you know, that is just another opportunity. It is not active duty Navy, but again, it gives students the opportunity to do a Navy reserve opportunity uh, option. Um, we also have Coast Guard opportunities, um, both within that license program through MARGRAD, um, which is a direct commissioning program to the Coast Guard. Um, and we are starting a, an auxiliary university program, which will allow any of our students on, on campus to actually work with a local, um, we would be the local flotilla, um, and it will allow them to commission into the Coast Guard too. Um, some of that will allow some of the sea days to kind of carry over in terms of cadet shipping, um, and actually be put on a Coast Guard cutter um, and, and things like that. So you can actually experience what it's like to be in the Coast Guard before making that obligation um, to actually commission into the Coast Guard. Um, as Kate mentioned, we have students that have very diverse um, desires in terms of service um, and those fall within the regiment and those students who are not part of the regiment in terms of our non-traditional or our non-reg um, majors. Um, so we do have students who go into the guard, um, they go into the air guard, there are awesome opportunities for tuition reimbursement. So some of them do have um, significant, they, they contribute to a student being able to also afford MMA at the same time. Um, but if there's something that you're interested in, because we're so small, we have the ability to work with one on one to figure out what the best path is for you, and to help you get there. Um, and that's probably the biggest thing that you can take away from this is all of the students here have different um, paths and, and we kind of work with them, you know, and, and sometimes it changes from when they come in to when they graduate, right? So um, as long as you keep those lines of communication open, um, we have the staff on campus to work with you and get you to where you want to be. Um, I'm, I'm glad that you've really set that stage well for anybody and I noticed that there was um, somebody that had asked in the chat how do you apply for the student incentive payment if you have any further questions we're going to put um, Kelly Gualteri's email address in the chat <laughs> um, for all of you to um, be able to ask her more questions because she is in charge of that program and so anybody that wants um, questions about how to obtain that student incentive payment, how to apply for that program, just general information of like, what am I setting myself up for? Um, nope, she put it right there. So <laughs> please be in touch with her. Don't be shy um, by contacting her and finding out more information is by no means signing you up for the program. So um, to get any information is, is really great. But I also typically wanted... that's Typically, that's not a program to that you need to apply for right away. So most of our students are doing it really as sophomores um, in their second year here. Um, I do encourage everyone, if you are looking at Navy, you want ROTC, put in your application as soon as possible, um, as well as for Marine Corps option. And then realize that if you didn't or if you did not get one of those scholarships, we have college program at Maine Maritime Academy. So, um, you know. Nate can actually talk about some of his classmates who have gone college program as well and have picked up scholarships along the way, even though they didn't initially get it um, in high school. Right, Nate, I'll turn it over to you for a second. Yeah, absolutely. So there are two primary types of active duty scholarships. So again, not referring to like the SIP, uh, which is particular to Maine Maritime. When you have, or with the, the Navy and Marine Corps scholarships, there's the four-year national scholarships, which you would receive prior to coming to MMA. Um, so you would apply for that uh, while you're in high school um, before you actually come to college. Um, and then there are what are known as side load options. There's three-year side load options and two-year side load options. 
Um, and there's actually a third caveat, which is known as advanced standing. Um, we'll talk about the side load options first. So the side loads are when a four-year national scholarship um, from any, uh, any university um, any, or, any or any midshipman in another unit um, throughout the entire NRTC program, either A, they get dropped medically or they choose to quit on their own. Um, but basically that midshipman has forfeited their, uh, their scholarship and that money is just sitting there. It's been allocated to be used um, and they're just waiting for somebody to come and pick it up. So a siloed op opportunity um, is what opens up and you apply for that your freshman year, your sophomore year, um, to either go for the, th the three or the two year options. Um, that's what I did. I didn't come in with a, a scholarship. So I ended up applying for a three year side load. Um, my freshman year, I ended up receiving that. Um, my spring semester, my freshman year, uh, and I did not, and I activated it uh, starting my sophomore year uh, was when it started to kick in and start paying for my tuition and my room and board. Um, the last option that I mentioned uh, is the advanced standing. And that's when you've participated in the unit, um, you have not picked up a scholarship, but the commanding officer of the unit has the authority to authorize you a guaranteed commission. Um, so, you know, say you're like a really awesome candidate, um, but for whatever reason, there just, you know, isn't enough opportunities, but uh, to receive, or there's not enough sideload op opportunities. Um, the CEO just goes, but hey, I really want this guy or person or girl or person to be in the Navy. Um, then they can just authorize you and guarantee you a commission. So you commission, you don't get any of the benefits. Um, you still participate in the full, or the full um, program, but you end up, you know, you still end up getting that commission if that's what you're really looking for. I think that this is incredibly valuable information um, that I'm glad we are able to present to you guys this evening. And just keep in mind, that this is a separate program than the regimen. So it is a choice of the student um, at that point. So if you have any additional questions about scholarship opportunities, NROTC commissioning, um, uh, the Strategic Sea Lift Midshipman Program, National Guard, anything like that, um, getting in touch with Kelly Gualteri, she can tell you a little bit more, um, more in depth if you have further questions, because I know that we're running low on time. So I don't want to um, uh, miss any, 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 question, any other questions that are coming through. But I do want to mention, um, somebody had a question about who, um, what majors are required to be in the regiment. And I just want to answer that really quickly before I pass it to Elizabeth for the very last question of the evening. But um, the majors that are required to be in the regiment are those that are gaining a license to work aboard any size vessel anywhere around the world. So that unlimited licensing vessel, uh, unlimited license, whether they're a student that will work their way from mate into captain roles um, or on the engineering side. And so um, any student that is required to be in the regiment is gaining this license that would probably take 20 to 25 years um, to slowly eke your way up if you did not attend a school like Maine Maritime Academy. And our students are coming away with that same responsibility and that same professionalism after four years. And so the regiment is purely to get a student ready for life out at sea. Um, and so, although there are some parallels that you can draw um, between the regiment and commissioning services, which is kind of why this broader conversation exists. Um, you can do one without the other, you can do one, you can do the other, um, and you can do both, which is really amazing. But I'm gonna pass it to Elizabeth to kind of cap us off now that we've got, we're kind of close, coming in on that eight o'clock hour. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have one more question and I'm gonna kind of wrap it into two. So bear with me. We've spoken a lot about the leadership opportunities the regiment affords their students, the structure, the amazing camaraderie, um, sort of a day in the life. But what I wanted to hear from the students, it's twofold. Um, what is the most challenging thing about being in the regiment? Because it's not all sunshines and rainbows. That's an inaccurate picture, right? That said, what is a piece of advice you would like to offer to our audience members who are sitting in the shoes you were in four years ago or three years ago to make the decision, well, what do I want my college to look like? That way we don't just say, well, hey, what's really hard, right? <laughs> but then also, you know, 
what do you wish that you had known way back when that you now have um, some experience and wisdom to impart? So most challenging. We've spoken a lot about the positives. Um, and one piece of advice. I'll start with Natalie. Um, personally, my biggest piece of advice is, as we kind of said earlier, you will get out of this what you put into it. My biggest advice is take everything that comes your way, because every little leadership opportunity, even every big leadership opportunity is going to give you an experience that you wouldn't get at any other school like Maine Maritime. Every single leadership opportunity that has come my way has bettered me as a leader, as a person, as a student in its own different ways. Um, and another advice kind of like that is take a variety of leadership opportunities and, you know, try to try to spread yourself out and do extracurriculars at the school, participate in the regiment. The biggest advice I can give is just enjoy it and do everything you can to broaden your horizons because there's so many opportunities here, not just in the regiment. Um, but I would say the hardest thing is, uh, honestly, I guess with mug month is just the time is when you come in as a freshman, you are a little scared, you're a little confused, you're not really sure, you know, how college works and you're being thrown into this whole training period on top of it. Um, it's gonna be difficult. It's gonna, it is difficult for everybody. Um, another thing is reach out, ask your training staff for help, ask your other mug mates for help. When you get into your company, ask your friends for help. Um, cause everybody here has done it and everybody here is willing to help and wants to see you thrive. You just have to put in what you want and ask for, ask for help, ask questions and just do the best you can. That's my biggest advice. I think that's great advice. <laughs> How about you, John? What would you offer as the, uh, head student in charge of the regiment, the regimental commander? That might not be the right term. I, I'll answer, I'll try to answer both parts of your question. I'll, I'll, the first piece is, uh, what is, what do I think is the hardest thing? And then I'll try to leave it off on my piece of advice. Um, so in my opinion, the hardest piece of the whole of this, of attending, being in the regiment itself is the fact that you are in the regiment. I mean, that you, you are, you, you, when you sign up, you're signing up to be, to put yourself in a structured lifestyle. You're signing up to wear your uniform wear a uniform correctly, you know, and, and be held accountable when you don't do your job. You know, if you, if you fail an inspection, if you, uh, you know, you don't, you, you're late for watch, something like that, you know, you're signing up to be held accountable for that. And that is something that you don't see at a lot of other institutions that, you know, you can go to college anywhere and you, your professor doesn't care if you come to class or not, you know, if you're, you're paying the same, if you show up, if you don't show up, they're going to get paid. Um, here, you know, with, with a lot of our required courses, you know, but set that we're not attendance is mandatory. And if you don't show up, you will not pass the class. You, you are committing yourself to saying, I want to do this. So I have to, you know, and, and you will be held to that. If you don't show up, the professors are not going to, they're not going to sign off. You know, they're required to teach you things that are set by the Coast Guard. And, and there are certain competencies you have to be able to prove in class, in the classroom through oral examinations, written examinations, and in labs through hands-on skills to prove that you are can satisfactorily, you know, meet those goals to be a licensed officer. And if you, by choosing to do that, your professor is not going to sign you off if you don't meet, if you're not putting in the work to get there. And that's something that I've, as I've gone through my four years, you know, and I have friends at other institutions that don't have that, they're not they can skip class when they want to skip class and they don't, they're not held to that same standard. They have a lot more freedom of their time and, you know, they have a lot, it's a lot easier for them to, uh, you know, they have that more, I guess what people think of as a traditional college lifestyle. Uh, so it's hard sometimes when, wow, you know, they're all out doing, you know, they're out hang, all out running around on a Wednesday or Thursday night and you're sitting there studying for an exam that you've got the next day that you have to be at at 8 a.m., you know, and you can't miss it because it's required. Uh, so that that is sometimes can be a little a struggle. Um, it's not it's not easy, but it's not anything that's undoable by any means. You know, if you if you something you really want, you can do it. Anybody can do it if you put your mind to it. Um, my biggest piece of advice I, that I would leave you with is that. I kind of what I said earlier, I mean, this is this is 
this organization, the regiment is here and it is run by the students and you get out of it everything you put into it. So if you choose, my advice to you is if you choose to come and you choose to get involved with it, be the best you can be and put everything into it that you can because it will pay its dividends later. I mean, I've, I've had opportunities to, I've met captains and chief engineers that have had amazing careers. I've met CEOs of companies that, you know, were, that were main maritime grads that ended up as, you know, being the CEO of, you know, rocket companies. I've shook hands with two star admirals that graduated from here that worked their way up through the Navy from the ROTC program, you know, and it, so the, the opportunities are endless. Um, and it's, it's a tremendous, re, it's a tremendous thing. And it's, and it's, there's a lot of people that have come ahead before me and before all of us that have built a reputation that's, you know, known around the world. And to be a part of that organ, you know, be a part of that club when you graduate as an alumni and get to be say that you were part of that, it means a lot to me. It means a lot, and it's I'm, it's something I'm proud of. So, if you want to do it, put your best foot forward and be the best you can be, and do it. You know, work hard and get everything out of it you can. That's probably what I would leave you with. And I'll with that, I'll turn it over to Nate to finish it off. A tough one to follow, Nate. <laughs> yeah, I won't, I won't try and. Uh make up for it but uh um yeah i'd say that the hardest thing about uh being in the regiment especially when you start getting older is uh or start getting more senior in the regiment is trying to hold people accountable um because it can get really awkward sometimes it's as awkward as you let it um let it get you get to you um right you might have to write somebody up and then work with that same person on a project in one of your classes um and that can be hard like People are people, um, and whether or not you can only control how much you, or how you take it, you can't control how they take it, and they may take it negatively. Um, but take it, you know, take it everything like and try to be as, in a positive mindset. Um, know that you're not doing it to be to get them in trouble. You're doing it to maybe help them grow as a person. They might really need it, um, and it might be hard for you to do it to them right then and there in that moment. But later on in life, they might thank you for it. Um, because you might have you know, helped better them in the long, the grand scheme of things. Um, you might have helped better themselves as a person. Uh, and my piece of advice to people in the, uh, who are looking into this school is when you get here, take a moment, pause every day, and just take it one day at a time. Um, don't think too far ahead in the future. Like be, have obviously set yourself some goals, um, but don't think like, you know, don't rush anything um, and try to enjoy every moment. Try to enjoy every every stage of your of your time at Maine Maritime um, through your fourth class all the way up to your first class year because um, there's something unique you can pull from each one. So don't try to rush anything. Don't try to wish that you were in another position because um, it almost always ends up there's always more than meets the eye. Um, and at some point in time, you might actually wish for a moment you were back in that position um, when you, know, you, you may not even realize how easy you had it. Um, so that's my advice to, to anybody who's looking to come to Maine Maritime and join the regiment. Poignant. I like it. Um, just to let everyone know, we're just about at time. So if there's any other last questions, uh, feel free to ask. You'll notice that Kate has already changed her name into her email address. I'll do the same. But I just wanted to take a moment to thank everybody, especially our panelists and our audience members for taking the time out of their regularly scheduled Wednesday uh, to join us tonight, dig a little bit, well, really a lot of it deeper into the regiment, um, and just feel free to ask whatever questions you have along the way. Kate, did you have anything else to add? No, um, we, we very much appreciate um, all of our panelists and those that are watching, um, you guys have taken your evening to learn a little bit more about the regiment, and I hope you're able to gain something from this. But in the future, if there's any more questions that we weren't able to get to because somehow the hour went so quickly, um, please email us. And if you wanted to speak with a student, if you wanted to connect with a regimental staff, we can certainly make that happen for you. So. Don't be shy. Um, we can get you on campus if um, you wanted to be um, a part of a regimental day. We can make these kinds of things happen for you. So be in touch with us. We want to make sure that you're getting all that you can about the really amazing um, leadership and things that can happen through this regimental program. Uh, and so be in touch with 
uh, Lieutenant Commander Gualteri about um, our unique program, Strategic Sea of Midshipmen Program, and we appreciate everybody's insight and questions this evening. So we'll get you guys back to the books because you're on what, week 11 of the semester? So <laughs> <laughs> you're coming down the pipeline you might be leaving for cruise soon um so you guys have have a loaded evening so we will say good night and thank you again for watching <laughs>